Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our TESO Hospitality Spring 2021 speaker series. For those who don't know me, uh, my name is Anthony Lai. I am the Student Affairs Program Manager here at TESO. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled, What It's Like to Work in a Hotel Today, featuring Sarah Dandashi of Ask a Concierge. Sarah has been featured in New York Times, US News, Business Insider, Reader's Digest, Thrillist, The Kelly Clarkson Show, and makes regular TV appearances on news stations around the country. In fact, she is publishing her first book later this year called Hospitality from Within. In today's talk, Sarah will provide insights on what it's like to work in a hotel today and how to provide an amazing experience for your guests while keeping your team members happy and engaged without being overwhelmed. If anybody in the audience have questions for Sarah throughout the webinar, uh, please, uh, we'll reserve the last 10 minutes for the Q&A session. So please submit your questions on the Q&A or chat feature and we'll get them answered towards the end of the presentation. So Sarah, I'm gonna go ahead and hand over the presentation to you. Um, if you don't mind sharing us a little bit about um, who you are, your background, I'm sure a lot of the audience wants to know, what do you do to <laughs> proceed with the uh, presentation? Good question. So first of all, thank you so much, Anthony, for having me. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, actually Anthony and I work together many moons ago uh, back um, at a property in Beverly Hills. So it is so nice to be able to reconnect, uh, especially on this platform. And for those of you that might know, I'm a very big fan of the International School of Hospitality and have been working with them for many years in different capacities. So it's such a delight to be able to be here today. Um, that being said, a little of my background, um, I am Sarah Dandeshi. I have worked in the luxury hotel um, industry for about 18 years. I started while I was going to school at Georgetown in Washington, DC, and I my cousin so so um, expertly invited me to uh, to apply for a position there. So I actually started my career at the Four Seasons in Washington D.C. and uh, really immediately fell in love with it. And then proceeded to go on. And uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I had the opportunity to work at the Lermitage Beverly Hills, um, which at that time was a Raffles property, then a Fairmont property. It's now a Viceroy. Uh, then at the Peninsula in Beverly Hills, which um, where I worked with Anthony, as well as then more recently was the London West Hollywood at Beverly Hills. So um, 15 of those years in hospitality, I worked as a hotel concept concierge. And uh, more recently, over the past, goodness, eight years or so, was part of the esteemed organization, Lay Clay Door as well, too. And it's been such a delight to be part of that. So that gives you a little bit of my background. Now, now you might even be wondering, what is this Ask a Concierge? So certainly you understand my background when it comes to working in hotels and hospitality uh, in, in regards to that. Uh, about eight years or, ago or so, I ended up going, what I like to say, beyond the concierge desk. And I started doing travel videos and answering all those questions that I got asked on a daily basis at the concierge desk. But I ended up creating these videos on them. And very naively at the time, I figured nobody wants to know this, um, but ended up finding out that, wow, a lot of people are interested to to find out from the people in the know, the people like hotel concierge, the people like us working in hospitality, what to eat, see, and do in the area. And it was so great to um, experience it in a different way or digitally, so to speak. So that is the brand Ask a Concierge. And it's been such an exciting journey that um, I think really enhanced my love for uh, the profession and certainly the hospitality industry, because it is such a it's such a beautiful industry. So um, with that being said, that's a little bit of my background. Those are my handles. But I do want to talk about what it is like to work in a hotel today um, and what we can also expect moving forward in regards to that. Because um, as we all know, over the past year, 
with the pandemic, everything has changed quite significantly. So really the focus of today is I want to talk about uh, not only how it has changed for the guest experience, but certainly how it's presented new challenges for us working in the industry, whether you are a concierge, whether you are you know working in a hotel as a front desk agent, another position, you know, this is all sort of information, regardless of what position you have in a hotel, things to consider if you are working, if you're just about to get back to work. Um, and then I'll even just talk about a couple of trends moving forward, because the way that I always look at the industry is it's great to be informed of the industry as a whole, which will help us be better at our day-to-day -day job. So that's why I always look at the big picture and then take and apply what is relevant to us. Um, so that being said, I'd love for this to be interactive. So we will be doing a question and answer towards the end, but um, if there is something that's very you know, pertinent, put in your question as it comes up. Um, if it's something that really ties into what I'm talking about at the time, uh, Anthony will, will share that and then I'll, I'll be happy to address it. But definitely wanna make sure that this is a really great sort of inter interactive experience. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and just Talk about just the travel industry as a whole. Why is it so important? I mean, obviously we feel, find it important because we work in it, um, but to break that down for, for others um, and just so that you have a, a bigger understanding of it, I mean, think about it. It was prior to 2021, a $2.9 trillion industry and it accounts or accounted for one in every 10 jobs in the world. That is huge, huge segment. Now, obviously, Hotels are one part of that, but they are certainly a big part of that. That is 50 million jobs globally. So in the past year, we have seen quite a big shift in the industry. And it's it's been interesting to see. And we've definitely learned a lot from individuals that have, you know, as I like to say, taken lemons and turned it into lemonade, because that has been really very much the theme of the past year. Um, but let's go ahead and just dive in a little bit so that we're all on the same page. Obviously, we have lived through this together. So, um, you know, some of this you might be aware of, but some interesting stats to just kind of really um, give the full picture. So the impact of the pandemic on hotels and resorts. Like as, as everyone, you know, in the past year, we've all faced huge challenges and especially the hotel industry. Um, and it's certainly a lot of it depends on destination um, and your markets, uh, which I'll dive into more a little bit later. That plays a huge factor in it, whether you're in a city and you're at a city hotel versus maybe at a resort or maybe at a, you know, in an open area. I happen to be in Florida at the moment and it feels very different where I'm normally based in Los Angeles and uh, the hotel experience in Los Angeles has also been, um, you know, quite, quite challenged as well. So, um, but resorts though have stayed relatively popular due to um, fewer travel restrictions and or, um, uh, well, not travel restrictions, I should say. Again, that's the destination specific. So if you're talking about maybe looking at places like Mexico or Central America, where Americans were really kind of like itching to get out of the country, but still not go too far away. Um, occupancy has been low. We've all seen it. Uh, you, and on average for the country, uh, certainly for the US, it's been about 30 to 50%. Uh, some might find that even a bit high, but that is because it's balancing out the cities that might've been about the 5% occupancy along with the properties that are, um, again, in more resort destinations that have been able to manage a little bit higher. But that is what the average has been in general for, for the industry within the United States. Um, of course, as I mentioned, uh, the market um, hotel ownership and the style of the hotel all play a role. Really, really big news, for example, uh, there was just a big purchase of extended stay. So for example, you've got the extended stay America, which is known for those extended stay um, uh, options as far as for a hotel option. Uh, they have done relatively well in the middle of the pandemic. So again, we're seeing all these different market segments and how they're playing out. But we, we want to understand this because this gives an idea as far as what's happening in the industry as a whole, 
what uh, guests that are traveling might be expecting and where, where they're stronger and maybe where um, we have you know, more challenges still ahead of us. Um, and again, in general, so we talked about extended stay. We very much know what type of uh, property that is, certainly more uh, you know, mid-scale on the very um, uh, low maintenance in regards to service. But then if you want to look at luxury hotels, you know, be it you know, the Four Seasons, the Peninsulas, the Ritz-Carlton, they have a very different uh, expectation from, from the clientele, which in turn for employees and for us working, very different expectation in regards to what we are bringing to the table. In general, with this luxury, um, with luxury service or luxury hotels, there is an increased sense of security and hygiene standards. So that's what the guests are bringing to the to their experience when they're coming to the hotel. So all of that is uh, is um, going into is playing into the whole experience. So now that being said, let's actually talk about what the current hotel experience looks like. Because uh, if you have had a chance to, first of all, if you are back and working, you certainly know what it's like from an employee side of things. And uh, we'll, we'll cover that in more detail. But I always like to look at it from the guest point of view, because that helps us understand a bit more the experience as far as what they're coming to the table with. It's always strong to kind of look through uh, the experience through their lens and what they're experiencing. So uh, I've stayed at a couple of different properties and I'll just do a quick touch on what those experiences have been like because they've all been in different markets. So for example, Pueblo Bonita um, is in uh, Los Cabos. So we're talking Mexico. Um, so of course, different, different rules and regulations there versus in the US versus in Canada. Um, and it is also an all-inclusive resort. So again, it's a very different experience in regards to that. But what was so lovely, what as far as a guest experience, there was that space. Um, and all of the employees there were, their protocols when it comes to health and safety were top notch. I, I mean, what they were doing, for example, is as soon as you get to the property, they take your bags, they end up wiping them down. They have all of their guests go through what they have is almost like a little kiosk. <laughs> I call it a sanitizing kiosk that you go in and they end up spraying you. And every single person that comes to the property has to go through that. If you refuse to go through that, they were very uh, strict in saying, sorry, you just can't come into the property. So uh, as far as the employee side of things, uh, they definitely were very, very good at being um, very mindful of their protocols, as well as uh, making sure that all of the guests followed those protocols. There was no wiggle room or leeway. They took it very seriously. Of course, uh, signs in throughout the lobby and throughout the, the entire property, reminding people to social distance, wear their mask. Uh, and then certain things change too. So you know, especially if we're talking about all-inclusive, a lot of times people love their buffets that experience was even different too. So you don't go, you know, as guests, they don't go help themselves. They now have employees helping serve. Um, so again, it's something to just be very mindful of because it is very, uh, you know, specific and that, but resorts have fared relatively well because of the space that they're able to provide. And also from an employee side of things, again, they have set those protocols and um, I found that even a lot of the employees feel very safe in a lot of these properties, again, just because they know that their hotel and property has absolutely implemented uh, the right safety protocols, but that guests are following them. So they feel supported uh, in regards to being there and working. Um, so another experience, completely opposite side of the spectrum, Four Seasons Philadelphia, uh, very luxury as we're on, most of us are familiar with the Four Seasons brand, but then also located in Philadelphia. So this is very much a city hotel. On the contrast, so Pueblo Bonito, um, in Los Cabos, they were at the time at about a 30% occupancy max. Now they are allowed to go up to 60% occupancy. And so they've been pretty much staying around that, that sort of range where this, you know, being a luxury hotel, in the middle of a big city, very different experience. Uh, lower occupancy, 
So uh, that has its challenges, certainly for ownership, uh, management, as well as employees. We're talking anywhere from like a five to 10 percent. Uh, and being that it's a Four Seasons brand, they have their Lead with Care program. Um, again, very um, expl- very detailed when it comes to uh, making sure that everybody felt clean and safe. And also, uh, it was done in an elevated way. So that was something that was really a, a great way to sort of take home um, as far as that experience as a guest. Now, from employees that have been working there, um, there has been, it has been a very rigid environment to work in uh, and uh, to make sure that the guests feel safe. Because especially when you're, when you're coming um, to the hotel experience and you're representing not only your property, but a bigger brand, there is pressure with that. And again, we'll, we'll talk more about the actual experience like that, um, you know, from the, work, from the employee side. But as a guest, Again, all about distancing, very specific to make sure that there were never too many people in one space at a time. Uh, even the way that they ended up doing the, the transactions, or I would say transactions, but the check-in process, you can do it dig- digitally through the app or uh, in person as well. So they did a phenomenal job as far as keeping everything very luxurious while still having a you know, high um, high use of technology. Uh, and it's also located in the Comcast Center in Philadelphia. So technology is definitely the, the name of the game when it comes to them. Uh, now, on, a, on another side of things, the Park High Aviara, uh, that is a resort experience located in Southern California. Again, uh, as we've seen with a lot of these resorts, those places that really have a little bit more space, um, guests feel like they can have um, more of an experience there, um, or at least a relaxed experience, because that has been such um, a, something that's been of concern is that we as hoteliers, obviously, we want to make sure that the cleaning and safety protocols are top notch, but it is still a hotel experience. So it's that fine line of making sure that things are absolutely done to the T, yet people are able to relax and that they can still have a hotel experience and not necessarily say, uh, feel like they're staying at, say, a hospital. So, so it's, again, that fine balance. But, uh, you know, in, in places like this that are able to take advantage of the outdoor dining, all of that, um, guests found that very, very comfortable QR codes. We've seen a lot of changes. So uh, we, we can talk about more of that if you have specific questions, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of an idea uh, that I've been able to have the guest experience in these properties, which are different markets, uh, and they have all been different, but as, as a whole, everybody does done an exceptional job. So the current hotel guest experience, you know, I've touched on this. Uh, if you are working, you're certainly a, a, aware of this, but it's also nice to see what other places are doing as well. So social distancing and uh, PPE are a priority. Absolutely. They want to make sure, you know, we want to make sure that not only do our guests feel comfortable, but also other employees feel comfortable because we are all coming at this with a different, uh, everybody has a different uh, sensitivity level. Uh, and, and rightfully so, and that's, and that's absolutely okay. Uh, we've seen revised arrival experiences from more virtual check-ins and check-outs. I know certainly before 2020, we were having a tough time to get guests to like, please do this on the mobile app for, for the property. And now everybody's very um, open to doing things on, on an app uh, for the hotel. Not to say that it takes away from the actual in-person experience, but it actually has proven to be a nice addition. Um, more, so more hotel services are done via the app. Uh, lobbies have been rearranged. Some are still that way. Uh, again, it's this reminder of social distancing and it's some of it might be a little bit more uh, discreet in the way it's done. And then obviously in other areas, you know, signage will be very visibly displayed. Uh, limited housekeeping, for example, oh, and I didn't even say this, as you can see, I'm in a hotel <laughs> right now um, in Florida. And even for example, here, you know, when I checked in, I'm at the Aloft in Del Rey and uh, they said, you know, housekeeping will not be doing service every day. So that is still what's happening now. Um, and again, it depends on the type of hotel. It depends on the guest experience. But in general, even if there is limited housekeeping, that 
should guests be inquiring and asking for it, uh, hotels are certainly providing it uh, most of the time, so long as the guest is not in the room. This also means limited items in the room. So we've seen, again, maybe less magazines, other touch points where they used to have hangers in the closet. Those might be taken out of the rooms um, or the extra pillows. So now those are all available, but they would just have to be called and, and called for and requested. Uh, my Another interesting thing is a like, goodbye mini bar, hello sanitizing packs and sanitizing stations. Uh, every single hotel that I have checked into, and I'm sure again, you've seen this, is um, has had these sanitizing packs. So whether it's a mix of uh, hand sanitizer, masks, again, to encourage everybody to um, be wearing the appropriate um, wearing max, masks appropriately when they are in an environment. So um, this has definitely been a changed experience. Other things, heightened cleaning procedures. I think we're all familiar with this from electrostatic sprayers. Also, the uh, hotels are still doing buffer time in between reselling rooms. So and being very vocal about this, that, OK, once a room is cleaned and a guest is out, they are waiting at least 24 hours before they resell the rooms. So more from, um, you know, if we're trying try trying to understand the hospitality or the um, operation side of things, um, that certainly presents its own challenges. Uh, dining offerings have changed, uh, as I mentioned, from buffets where people aren't helping themselves, that you actually have employees helping them as well, to uh, room service. Also, hello QR code, by the way. <laughs> uh, if we all remember prior to 2020, I, don't, I think so many of us, certainly within the US, were like, we don't really care about the QR code. And now it's QR code everything. Um, and again, that's a way to sort of minimize touching you know, things and having materials that people touch. So uh, that's been a change experience. Hotel gyms are being monitored, uh, whether they're having time slots, you have to make a reservation, or they're just only letting in a certain number of people at a time. Each property is doing it a bit differently, uh, but guests are now getting used to that and understanding that experience. Uh, activities are limited. So if you have more of like a resort property where you have, you know, maybe it's yoga or different, different activities that, that traditionally they would have, these are also uh, limited and understandably so. And then also depending on the location and where you are, they are doing guest temperature checks. I have not personally seen that in many hotels in the US per se, but definitely overseas and certainly in uh, Mexico, um, they have been very very um, upfront about that, that they are checking temperatures. So this is sort of the guest experience and how that's changed. Oh, and then this, the pool. So if you have a property that has a pool, I'm sure the number one question is, can we still go to the pool? Obviously, um, that's a big question. And in general, you know, a lot of places have been more open. Certainly it is property specific, but as we are um, phasing out of this, uh, that is a big area of concern. People want to know if I am traveling and staying at a hotel, what will I be able to do? They know the experience is going to be different, but they want to know exactly how it's going to be different. So um, again, it's always good to be informed and to be able to share that information uh, prior to the guest arrival. So the Again, uh, to kind of come back to what the topic is, is like what is the is what it's what is it like to work in a hotel now? Uh, it's also really good to understand what are current guest concerns because all of us, we're, it doesn't matter what position you are working at the hotel, you now under, I mean, we're all on the same page as far as how the guest experience has changed, but these are some of the biggest concerns that I'm, that we are getting, people are asking a lot about. Will it be safe? Everybody wants to know how safe the experience is like, you know, even if they're, if they're a little bit more relaxed on it, uh, they want to know, will it be a safe experience? Um, because some people, this might be their first time actually, you know, traveling or staying in a hotel. It has been a year, but uh, not, there are still people that this will be their first time traveling. Uh, other individuals want to know, will the experience still be relaxing or luxurious? Um, these are, you know, concerns. Hey, if I'm going to be paying XYZ a night, Will it be worth it? Because that is part of the hotel experience. So that's why, again, the other question is, is it worth what I'm paying for? Uh, what activities are going to be limited? Do I have to wear a mask everywhere? So, um, you know, these are things to understand that guests that are coming to you when you're working at a hotel, the top of mind concerns, uh, and just to be mindful of that.
So what is it like to work in a hotel today? We know what the guest experience is like, certainly modified, um, but I wanna talk about this in a way of how to be a proactive employee. And that's why I shared the information before about the guest experience, because it's all about understanding it through the lens of, of other individuals. That helps us be better at what we do, be more empathetic, understand the experience in a different way than more than just through our lens. Um, so being proactive, I think, is a really, a really important part. So um, working in a hotel today, we'll talk about the challenges that we're seeing and then how we can look at these as opportunities, because in any situation, there is always an opportunity to use a challenge to um, overcome or to think about things differently. And I think the key trait of being in the hospitality is that most of us are fairly nimble. Uh, we like to think outside of the box. No day is ever the same. And similar to how every day we might get different requests or have a different guest interaction, uh, it's important to keep that nimbleness and that open mind, that op being op of open mind um, when it comes to to the challenges that were presented today. So what we're seeing, uh, obviously a lack of guests, uh, that is certainly one side, or depending on where you are, I, again, I happen to be in South Florida at the moment, and there are some places that they, they're wide open and they are at full occupancy. Now, why are, this is interesting because of course you have to keep in mind operations. How many people are working at the desk or in the hotel to keep a, a hotel running? Maybe that's a low occupancy. You're going to be working in overdrive. And then on the other side, if occupancy is high, maybe you're coming out of things being slow and you still haven't brought back enough of the employees to, um, to be there and you are at operating at 90% occupancy with maybe half the employees. So these are a, ch a lot of challenges. And really, no matter how you slice it, what we're seeing is that people that are working at a hotel today are doing a lot of jobs. And it, it, is, it is hard work right now. And it is a very different experience to be working in a hotel right now. So I say that to let you know, it's, you are not alone. A lot of people are feeling the same way, whether there's a lack of guests and you're just doing everything um, because maybe you're the only person working or it's just you and one, one other person, or um, you might have a couple of other people on your, on your team that have come back, but then now it's an overdrive. So it is challenging in regards to that. Um, having limited options within the property from restaurants to the gym, other facilities. Uh, obviously we are in general of the yes nature. We always want to tell our guests yes, but right now we have to let them know that opportunity, you know, what we have, what our op options are, are limited. And so facing the challenges as far as what are those options within the, within the property, and then maybe what are those options off property as well too. Uh, another big challenge, enforcing safety protocols. Uh, that can be challenging depending on the, the type of guests that might be coming to your property. Uh, also, you just want to maintain this, this level of safety and, and, you know, from both the employee side of things, but then certainly from the guest side of things as well, too. So that's proven to be, uh, you know, a little challenging, even though we all know the basics as of now, because we are going, it's a year um, going into this. Um, varying guest comfort levels. Uh, you know, some guests, again, might be very uh, sensitive to, you know, cleanliness and safety standards. And then you have others that are going to be far more relaxed and you might have to be like, knock, 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 reminder, please put on your mask. <laughs> so all of these, uh, uh, the variables are quite extreme on a regular basis. Now, that being said, I do want to mention that also um, your coworkers have different comfort levels. And to be mindful of what that is like, that you can have two people at a desk and you have somebody that feels very comfortable and is very relaxed. And then you have somebody that's extremely cautious. So these are all things that you have to keep in mind that can add a lot of challenges to the dynamic, not only the guest experience, but also the actual work environment experience. And just to be respectful um, for those of us, you know, those that are around us. 
Uh, another big challenge, rapidly changing local regulations and guidelines. One day things are open, another day things are closed. That's also been affecting. We've got a restaurant is open. Now we can't do dining in restaurants. Now, oh, we can a little bit. Oh, we can't dine inside, but we can dine outside. Very challenging because every day is, um, has been different um, depending on where you are located. Um, and that being said, you know, the limited options in the area. Also knowing that really at the end of the day, the hotel experience is different. And so knowing that guests, guests are aware that the hotel experience is different, but they are coming to that with different expectations. And so sometimes those expectations are, they don't want it to be different, but then how can we still maintain that they have enough of the luxury or the, the guest experience that they're used to while still implementing new procedures, protocols, um, whether it's under limited uh, you know, regulations or operations. So these are the challenges. It's challenging <laughs> to say the least, um, but where can we find opportunities in this? Uh, I really think that right now as a hotel employee, you want to use this time to demonstrate your value. So in general, whether it's low occupancy or high occupancy, right now the attitude is roll up your sleeves and be okay to get in there and do the work. Yes, you might be doing jobs or roles that aren't normally under your job title, but the more that you express this willingness to, to be available to help get the job done, so to speak, uh, at the hotel, the more management will see that, the more owners will see that. And they understand that right now it is a different time. So you want to demonstrate what value you are bringing to the table more than just your traditional job title. You want to be resourceful and willing to do multiple roles. I know that you, we are being cautious right now because if we do too many roles, we don't want any jobs or positions to be eliminated in the future. So we want to be of service and of, and of use, but of course we don't necessarily want maybe hybrid roles to be the new normal moving forward. But, uh, and we'll talk about this more a little bit later, but if you think like an owner and understand that there might be a temporary period of time where hybrid roles might be necessary and understand that it is a temporary uh, experience um, and to, to be visual in that. So again, be vocal, supportive, and show your creativity to management. Again, now, the, the sort of beauty of right now is that where things used to be so rigid and structured and maybe you know ownership or management wasn't so open to new ideas of doing, new ideas of ways of doing things, they are more open now. We have to be. Uh, you know, obviously, it all depends on the individual that you might be working for, or working under. But if you demonstrate that creativity and that forward thinking, that will not go unnoticed. That is absolutely um, appreciated in today's environment. Another thing, especially in hospitality, you want to foster relationships, both with guests as well as local vendors, because again, it's about communication. So for example, with guests, you want to foster those relationships so that they continue to feel comfortable. Uh, you also want to foster relationships with your colleagues as well. I, I think we we all know how many hours we spend at work and how often have we referred to our work environment, our hotel as our, our second family. I mean, arguably it could even be our first family, depending on how many hours you work. So it's important to foster these relationships so you create a healthy environment, uh, not only with your colleagues, with guests coming in, but then also with local vendors as well too. Because again, right now, I think there's been such a focus, uh, not think, there definitely has been a focus on this sense of community and people are really willing to, they want to work together because we're all, we all have challenges. And so fostering those relationships now is so important to moving forward. Um, of course, be, be sure to stay informed and be a resource. It's one thing to educate yourself, absolutely educate yourself, but it's another thing to proactively 
share that information. And the more resourceful, you know, that you show, show that you are on top of current situations, the more people will respond positively to that from a guest perspective, from a colleague's perspective, from, again, with management or ownership as well. I always want to think about having alternatives lined up. I mean, I think that uh, for those of you that are concierge that happen to be tuning in uh, or aspiring concierge, you definitely understand alternatives. Additional options are the name of the game. That's definitely key. But regardless of what position you work at in a hotel, you always want to have the have additional options because right now things are limited. So keeping this in mind, again, it's about being educated and, and informed. And then ultimately at the end of the day, we are in the hospitality industry. So service is one thing. Service as we all know is more transactional, but hospitality is how you make people feel. So you want to lead with empathy and care, especially now. And always, always, always stay calm because Emotions are heightened. And if you are, if you are that pillar of calmness, if you are that that rock, so much good will come out of the current situation and challenges. Uh, people will will look at you in a different way. So these are opportunities to really demonstrate your sense of leadership, your resourcefulness, and um, and you know what pe people can rely on you for. And that reliability, that's where comfort comes in. And again, it's how you make people feel. So hopefully this kind of makes sense in breaking this down. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities if you have the right attitude towards, towards the situation right now. So another aspect, preparing to return. Uh, some of you might already be back at work. Some of you have worked this entire time. Some have not worked and maybe going back to work shortly or you're back to work and your team members are coming back in. So these are all things to, to keep in mind. Obviously, number one, communication is key. You, we're all, we're all intelligent beings. We all have been through this together. There aren't surprises about, um, you know, uh, maybe surprises might be regulations changing, but as far as like, we know, okay, we're in the pandemic, we're a year into it. We know the basics. So Communication is key because at the end of the day, it's that, that human aspect, that human element. If there is an issue or, you know, something is limited or may, if there's a glitch or a problem, so to speak, if you always lead with communication, people connect on the human level and, and they will understand. They may not like it, but they can understand. And understanding is the root of fostering those relationships. So you wanna communicate with your coworkers about expectations, um, about what they can expect the experience to be like when they're coming back, concerns, processes, all these things that um, might, be, might prove to be challenging for them to deliver service in the way that they used to deliver service. Um, but it's not to say that you can't do it. You just have to be creative. But again, it starts with communication. I've mentioned this before. I'm going to keep mentioning it. I was staying informed. I'm just a big fan of staying informed. The more knowledgeable you are about everything, uh, you, are, you are walking into any situation with a sense of confidence because you have more knowledge. So research the laws in the area. Um, we rate welcome materials for the guests. That might have to change because if you're staying informed and you are communicating that information, again, now guests are coming in with a little bit more of a sense of relief because they know what to expect. And you've proven that you know what you're talking about as well. Uh, Want to stay informed by watching the local news as well as the as world news. And I emphasize the world news because we are seeing that so many different places are at different levels of reopening. Some are open, some are very close, some are going back into lockdown. But when you can see how people are at different stages and what they're doing, we can learn a lot from that. And maybe we can implement um, you know, different, different strategies or different protocols based on what we're seeing other people are doing. So that's why it's also so super important to stay informed on a on an international level. Uh, double down on relationships. I mean, I to be honest, I think uh, 
uh, relationships are the core of hospitality and, and, and the industry and working in hotels. But now is more than ever is the time to whether you, you have a s- slow time and you have more time to reach out to those vendors and maybe establish connections or further your connections in regards to that. Um, maybe foster different partnerships. And again, this helps helps moving forward because we are all in this together and it is tapping into the community aspect because a hotel, as we know, is more than just a place for heads and beds, <laughs> uh, but there is a community element of it. And it's because being a community, not only for the guests coming, but for community, for those living in the area, uh, for those other uh, vendors in the area, those other businesses. So you can be this sort of hub for the local area. Uh, great time to get it organized as well too. Uh, again, whether it's a slower time, you can maybe take this time to like rework uh, SOPs, protocols, or, or uh, being forward thinking and creating new templates. I mean, whether it's templates for guest emails or anything that you can do to make your job easier moving forward. And if you have the time now, this is the time to do it. Um, as we all know, uh, there's definitely a boom in travel happening. Uh, you know, they talk about it being expected to be like the roaring 20s. Uh, a fellow colleague who I won't take this credit, um, but did have a conversation with a, a colleague, Robert Marks, who uh, former president of the USA for Le Clay d'Or, s- referred to it as the renaissance of travel. And I want to give him credit for that because I think that accurately uh, reflects what we can expect moving forward. Yes, there's going to be a boom, but again, because we've had so many challenges, there's going to be this renaissance in that we're going to be doing things differently. People want things that are more meaningful. They want more experience. They're a little bit more sensitive to, to what the travel and the hospitality, the hotel experience is like. So keep in mind this notion of it's this renaissance of the travel industry. It's exciting. You know, it's been challenging. But again, with all of this, these opportunities, and if you get excited to find the different ways and doing things that sets you up um, to really kind of ride the wave of the big boom of travel that will be coming. So again, you know, I've just talked about this challenges from challenges come innovation. So now is the time to change, recreate, reimagine our industry. We've seen all sorts of different uh, protocols as we've seen here, obviously just in the world of cleaning, um, how, how much that's had to change. Uh, that notion of hygiene theater, which I'll come and, and start talking about in a bit. But I mentioned this, uh, you really wanna go at it about thinking like an owner. And I've always said this, so prior to the pandemic, this has always been useful. If you are working in a hotel, if you think like an owner, you are going to have, your experience as an employee will be so much better. Your upper management will respect you more, but then you also understand why decisions are being made. And it doesn't necessarily become a personal thing, but it's for the greater well-being and good of the hotel. So as we've seen, tough decisions have been made. People, nobody wants to let go anybody. Nobody wants to ha- furlough people, but some of those decisions had to be made. Um, it's been challenging for owners having to do this. Uh, we, again, you know, other, other things that owners have had to go through, they've had to reevaluate every procedure that they had in place before. Everything is being reexamined. Um, but I, what I love about this notion of, of thinking like an owner is this taking an ownership of the guest experience. So know what you can offer guests. Uh, some of the hotels that I've seen that have done a fantastic job, they have made it very clear to their front, front uh, office employees that yes, you can do these amenities, you can do this, you don't have to ask for permission. So think about this, even if you are a manager, to communicate with those working under you, you that they can, they too can um, make these independent decisions to enhance the guest experience, that they have that authority to do that up to a certain amount. That changes the employee experience because they feel more pride in what they're doing, but then 
it also enhances the guest experience. So that's really something that I think that we should really uh, consider when it comes to our communications uh, internally. Um, again, uh, you take ownership of complaints. That's always been a big thing. You want to think big picture. It's not necessarily just your job, but again, it's how does maybe your interaction with the guest impact the entire uh hotel experience, the entire stay. It's very important. Um, and I will sound, I will be repeating this over and over and over again, but you want to stay informed. You want to stay informed and keep colleagues informed. So staying informed and communicating are absolutely key. Now, what type of hotel does a hotel need now? Given all of this, understanding what guests are expecting, what guest challenges there are, what challenges we've seen working in a hotel. So how can you be that star employee? So what type of hotel or employee does a hotel need now? Professionals with multiple areas of expertise. Don't be shy. If you are talented in different areas, make sure that management knows that uh, and that they can tap into that. T team members with a can-do attitude are always welcomed. I mean, I would think that that is the key to being part of the hotel industry, but now more than ever to have this can-do attitude and also this willingness to learn new skills. I get it. It's so easy to get into a, a way of doing things that you don't necessarily want to do. Doing new things can be challenging, but if you have this willingness to, to implement and learn new skills, that definitely bodes very well um, in your favor. Uh, the ability to be creative and problem solve. Again, I think that's, that is something that's always been a part of the hotel industry, um, but certainly more, more so moving forward. This eagerness to finding new ways to deliver the same high level of service, um, but with new guidelines. Uh, and then somebody that's resourceful, kind, empathetic, uh, and just willing to do the work needed to be done. Really, it is at the end of the day, it's having an attitude of making the impossible possible. And you don't have to be just a, a hotel concierge. I think that comes very uh, naturally to us, but you can be in other positions in the hotel. And by the way, now is a really great time. If you are looking to advance your career in the hotel industry, by doing all of these things, by showing your different areas that you might be talented in, being willing, all of that will bode very well for you if you're looking to advance your career because uh, people will be, they'll be promoting from within. So you can definitely use this time to your advantage. Uh, so just to, before we wrap this up, just a couple of different things to talk about future travel trends. And the reason why I talk about this is if we understand where the market is going, it just gives us a better idea as, as far as what guests are looking for. And then that also knows that, that sorry, that informs us as far as um, if we might be looking for a new position at a new hotel, maybe it might be mean looking at new markets, seeing what's working where, what are people opting for? So that's why I'm talking bigger picture in travel trends. Uh, again, we've just seen more of a leaning towards people looking for places that are out, have a lot of outdoor activities from beaches to national parks. Um, there's even also been fewer flights, higher prices. There's gonna be very much a tug of war in regards to that. Now on the other side, road trips have definitely still been very, very um, popular. Even though we are seeing people inching back into uh, flying, road trips still seem to be very, very common. Uh, it's an easier way to travel for family. You can also have more of a controlled environment for those that are very sensitive um, to, uh, you know, safety stand, you know, safety protocols. So road trips are, I think we will still be seeing those uh, throughout the rest of the year. Flexible cancellation policies across the board. I, I always tell uh, travelers that's probably the biggest thing in their favor from this past year has been more flexible cancellation policies. So I think that that's going to be here for, for quite a bit to stay as, again, people have different comfort levels when it comes to traveling. Uh, increased use of travel agents. People want that assistance. How does that apply to us working in a hotel? We, we will be we should be mindful of those relationships with travel agents because more people will be using them. Um, reduce touch points everywhere. That I think will, all, or I know will also be a trend moving forward. 
Then I also love this, this notion of hygiene theater. If you think about it before, prior to 2020, when we were cleaning, you know, the guest rooms or the common areas, we tried to do it in a way that nobody saw. But now it's very different. We want the guests to see that. So uh, and I use the term hygiene theater, not in a negative way, but as in, um, in a positive way, that we are being very mindful that we want guests to know that we have their best interest in mind. So it's okay for them to see certain things, um, especially when it comes to the notion of increased sanitation. Uh, resorts, leisure destinations have um, are still going to, I think, really be the forefront of coming out of the the pandemic. Again, they have more space, um, maybe more amenities. This idea of they can travel to one destination it remains very popular for U.S. travelers certainly. Uh, millennials as well as the LGBTQ community will be more leading the pack when it comes to uh, to travel. Uh, they may they may be traveling with less individuals. They're more likely to feel comfortable getting back out there. So we can see again um, that sort of segment leading the travel industry, the recovery. Uh, sustainable travel is still very important. In this past year, people have really um, thought about traveling in a different way. So if that is um, if that was part of the conversation in your hotel and your guest experience prior, uh, that should still be part of the conversation because guests are still very mindful of that. Multi-generational travel, you had, for example, you've had maybe a lot of grandparents that in the past year, they weren't able to see their, their grandkids. And now with the vaccine rolling out and individuals feeling more comfortable, you are seeing, seeing trips that have everyone from grandparents to grandkids traveling together. So keeping that in mind when you're working as a hotel employee of the demographics that are going to be coming to your property. Uh, also longer trips as well too with people that are now doing more remote working. They can stay in a hotel for a change of environment, a change of um, scenery, that sort of thing. So these are these are just to, to keep in mind um, as far as what what travelers are also doing. So as I mentioned, this boom of travel is certainly coming. Uh, but as I mentioned, I love to think of it more as the renaissance of travel uh, because there are so many, so many different changes that are coming out of this. And I have to say it is um, whenever there's a moment of great challenge, those that step up to the plate and are open-minded and have this notion of they want to they want to be innovative, those will end up really succeeding. But um, have faith <laughs> and know that uh, it is coming back and, um, and pretty soon, and, and may, arguably it could be sooner than we expect, uh, we will have more work than we even know what to do with. So uh, if you did have some downtime over the past year, understand that, embrace that for what it is and be prepared and rested and ready for what's to come because Travel's coming back in a very, very, very big way. I like to refer to it as a slingshot. It's been going down and then it's going to release and at some point go zoom. And um, you just want to be prepared so that you can ride that wave and, and really take advantage because travel's not going anywhere. It's just changing a bit, but it's definitely, definitely coming back. So that being said, uh, I hope you guys uh, learned a lot from today. I always want to continue the conversation. Uh, you can certainly find me on um, social media. Yeah, I know we'll be we'll be taking a couple of questions uh, in just a minute, but be sure to connect with me on social media. Send me a message. I, I check my messages on every single platform, be it Instagram to LinkedIn to, to all of that. Um, also, just a side note, I do have a book that will be coming out and we will be uh, launching the details within the month. So if you want to find out more about this book, I'll be doing a special pre-sale. Uh, so everything will be uh, discounted. Send me uh, a message, either a DM or send me an email. My email is listed here. Let me know that you want to be on the short list for, uh, for the book. And I will totally keep you posted as soon as it's out. So please send me an email uh, so that we can continue the conversation going because, uh, I, you know, that is the nature of the industry. So that being said, thank you, Anthony. I see you're back on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Sarah. Lots and lots of great insights and tips on what it's like to work in a hotel today. Mm -hmm. um, so the audience, I know some of you have raised your hand. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type it in the Q&A or chat feature. We'll get those answered um, 
during these last few minutes of the webinar presentation. Um, yeah, and Sarah, if you don't mind, just keep that uh, PowerPoint on. Um, I know course. a lot of us want to connect with you. Um, so yeah. if you do, do need to connect with uh, Sarah, just find her at Ask the Concierge or email her at sarah at askaconcierge.tv. Yes. Yeah, so while yeah. we wait, um, Sarah, I love that quote where you where um, about the employees of having the attitude of making the impossible possible. I think that's the best way of moving forward for, especially for um, uh, people that have been either furloughed or that are looking to get into hospitality. Um, what's your advice on someone that is looking to get into the industry? However, because of the pandemic, there's been challenges. Is there something that, you know, there they that you would recommend on how to just get into a hotel or work? In a yeah, hotel? that's a really great point. And I thank you for bringing that up because I did want to, to mention that, uh, you know, I understand certainly those that are in school right now that might be like, oh, like, does it, does it make sense to still be in hospitality? Like what are jobs going to be like going forward? And what I can definitely say is yes, it might be challenging now. And you definitely want to, you know, um, we'll talk about some ways that you can try and get in there, but know that the demand is absolutely coming back. And now more than ever, uh, hotels need, will need new employees. They need people with more, um, that are, that are eager to get in there and do, do the work again, as I said, roll up the sleeves. And, um, so as far as, as, um, you know, getting out there, I just say ag aggressively, you know, just start applying and apply everywhere because here's the thing, the past year, 2020, 2021, many people worked in the industry. And guess what? A lot of people got furloughed and, you know, people have lives. Some had to segue out of the industry and that might be temporary. Some might be making a big, a longer term uh, change in regards to that. But at the end of the day, nobody, people aren't going to be scrutinizing your resume in the same way as they did before. I know before when we would like give our resume and you're like, oh, how do I explain that? I like, I didn't work for three months or this gap here now that's not going to be the case. People just want to see that you are um, expressing like that, that interest and that um, you're just eager to get out there. So I say, uh, you know, try, try working with everybody. And maybe let's say your goal is to work at a certain brand or a certain property, but you just can't seem to get in there. Well, that's okay. Maybe you try working somewhere else uh, in the meantime. So let's say you want to work at a five-star hotel and you know, it's a little difficult, or maybe there isn't even a five-star hotel in where you live right now, maybe apply, you know, or not maybe, definitely apply to, to different places. And, you know, just, just find the experiences wherever you can get hired uh, and then use that and then be okay with growing from there as you, as you sort of move, move along. Um, so now is definitely the time and it might be challenging, but opportunities are definitely out there. And I think actually, what was it? Even I think in the past, in February alone, uh, the hotel industry added or they hired, uh, yeah, they added 36,000 more jobs. So they hired 36,000 more people within the U.S. just in the month of February alone. Now that's how many they've added. That's not including the number of jobs that are still out there. So jobs are still available. All right. Yeah, <laughs> lots of, yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree with your, with you more, Sarah, on especially, you know, get yourself in there. They, a lot of employers want to see that momentum, that interest that you're still invested in hospitality. Although it may yes. not be your choice hotel, you know, we all want to work in four seasons and the, the peninsulas of the world, but we all yeah. have to start somewhere like myself. I have to start somewhere. You, you, I'm sure you had to start off somewhere before we even got into that, to that specific uh, five-star five diamond brand. Definitely. So, uh, I mean, if there are any questions, let us know, raise your hand, put it in the chat. Um, but I know we yeah, we got some uh, great comments um, from Suzanne. Um, such helpful information. Thanks for your insight, Sarah. And then comments from uh, Ruth. Congrats on your book. Thank you so much for all your information. So um, on the book, uh, is it um, available now on sale? Where do we uh, 
Get to, so uh, it'll be available uh -huh. within the month. So we're still yeah. still finalizing the exact <laughs> date. So that's why that's why I was like, let me know, send me a message because what I'll do is I will add. Um, if you're interested, I'll just add you to the list so that as soon as it's available for pre-sale, you know, um, you know, for example, even like a Kindle will be like, we'll be doing a, a special sale on that. And then certainly once the um, paperback comes out and then we'll be doing little gifts and goodies with it as well too. So um, if you want to stay informed, just shoot me an email. And I'll definitely add you to the, the list. So to just let you know, so nothing spammy, just to so you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. And I think we just want to leave with this. Um, I'm sure, you know, some of us audience are a little bit shy, so they'll definitely send the questions to your, uh, to your contact. Sure. Um, but I want to leave off with um, one last thing. I know you go through a lot, you, you travel extensively through a lot of hotels throughout this pandemic. Is there yes. one amenity or one certain special thing that a hotel did that really made that wow moment that you didn't expect, but... Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. Uh, you know what I, I will actually, I'll say, and I, I will, I will call them out in a good way. Um, the Four Seasons Philadelphia, and I will say this, and uh, yes, a, a beautiful, you know, amenity with chocolates and this. Okay, sure, I will always take chocolates. I think we would always always take chocolates, <laughs> but um, what they did is. They uh, actually had found my 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 logo, which is my a cartoon drawing of of myself as as a concierge, uh, and they actually had somebody on property draw that on a card, and then they had all the people from the front desk on the concierge desk sign it and say welcome. And why I love it is it's extremely personal. It didn't cost them anything <laughs> it's the four seasons they they could do all this stuff but it was so personal it was such a nice touch and it it made a personal connection with all the people that are working there and and they were like welcome welcome to the hotel so i what i love for me the most thoughtful moments are quite often the things that don't cost the hotel anything so it's how you think outside of the box in regards to that and there's so many different opportunities and also as i mentioned before if you have different talents or different areas of expertise, make sure your team knows this. The one girl is a pretty talented artist and she loves to, to draw. And so they used a girl who's really good at, at drawing and she drew it. And so now she gets to add these things to the amenity. So um, again, it doesn't cost the hotel anything. It's extremely personal and it lets this girl, you know, this employee shine because she's sharing a special talent that's very unique to her. So it combines all of these things are things that I talked about. So thank you for asking that question. Uh, but I love that. I mean, I still have it at home. I mean, obviously I have it at home. So <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, creativity and personalization is definitely, you know, it's key. It's key. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. Well, this is I think that pretty much concludes our presentation. Uh, once again, we want to thank Sarah Dandashi of Ask a Concierge for providing us specific insights on what it's like to work in a hotel today. Um, if anyone here in the audience um, have missed a recording or just jumped in during the middle of the session, uh, we will provide a recording for this webinar. It'll be available on YouTube, so subscribe to us at TSO channel. Um, also, the recording is also available on Facebook Live, so go to our Facebook page, uh, the International School of Hospitality, and you can watch the entire presentation uh, that you just saw a few moments ago. Uh, once again, uh, thank you all for supporting our TSO speaker series. Uh, this concludes our spring season, and we will look forward to seeing you in the summer. In the meantime, follow us on our social media channels, um, including the Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Just type in TSO or the International School of Hospitality, and you'll find us right there. We look forward to seeing all of you soon. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>